Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepizani. Here are your top stories this Monday. The spokesman for Zimbabwe Prime Minister Morgan Changurai is in critical condition in hospital after a horrific car accident. Luke Tamborinyoka's car overturned in Damboshava while he was visiting his royal home. He is believed to have suffered broken ribs, a damaged lung and serious head injuries. A statement from the MDCT party said that Taramanyoka's Toyota Prada overturned after a rare tire burst. He was traveling with his five brothers who escaped with minor injuries. Stay tuned for updates on this story as we get them. Priests from the Anglican Diocese of Central Zambia have placed a complaint against one of their own bishops. It is alleged that Bishop Derek Kamukwamba has been facilitating abortions for young girls who have been impregnated by his nephew. Bishop Kamukwamba's nephew, Stubbs, who is training to become a priest, is accused of living a sinful life which his uncle is hiding from the church council. The bishop's nephew allegedly made two girls pregnant before he became a novitiate. Zimbabwe's only white government minister has said that racial slurs against white people at the highest political platform continue to show a gross level of intolerance. Education Minister David Caltech remarked that if he made similar insults about black people, then he would rightly be branded as a sympathizer of the Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan. Writing on his Facebook page, Colted said that the ministerial colleagues sometimes forgot that he was in the same room when they made shocking comments about whites. Colted said deeply offensive remarks on the race were frequently used by groups in Zimbabwe. In Zambia, the popular musician Albert Sowimba has died in a car accident. The accident happened over the weekend on Lusaka Road. Police used access to break into his car and attempted to rescue Silwimba, but their efforts were in vain. Edify Hamukale, the chairman of Zambia Music Copyright Protection Society, said that the news has shocked the nation and that Silwimba will be hard to replace. His music was loved by many Zambians. Here's a clip of his hit song, Ichongo. <laughs> Last week, we told you about Miss Malaika beauty pageant that took place in South End in England. The event was in its 10th year and the theme of the event was road safety. Well, we're delighted to speak to the winner of Miss Malaika 2012 now, Jane Chilambe from Zambia. So Miss Malaika 2012, how exciting was that announcement for you? I was really excited and it was beyond words. It wasn't, I didn't really expect it. Uh, just because, as I said, the girls were really competitive and um, I'd spent a night with them. So I knew how they were, they were, they were like, how the world were preparing themselves. So to, to take the title was really exciting and I was really overwhelmed. Yeah, how proud were you to win, uh, you know, to be a winner representing Zambia and what did you win? I mean, it was really a great platform and to represent my country, um, it did showcase the beautiful uh, country of Zambia and just to put it on the map and uh, the prizes were a trip for this motor all paid for as well as going to Africa to do charity work with and work with children the privileged children in the rural areas of Zambia I think or Zimbabwe. Yeah, so are you looking forward to traveling and working for the Mumba Trust? Of course, it's really exciting. That's that's part of the of the title as well. Yeah, you get to travel, but it's not only about traveling and enjoying yourself. It's also you're being a role model for other people. Oh, thank you so much, Jane, for speaking to me today. Oh, thank you so much. 
In entertainment, Zambian music is becoming more popular internationally. We have featured artists like Ariel and Rough Kid on this show. Helping many of these artists are The Basement Crew, a promotion company based in London that aims to help Zambian artists to make it here in the UK. Joining me on the line is Oscar Mianda, one of the founders of Basement Crew. So Basement Crew, how did you come up with a name and tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I mean, I, I could actually say it's out of boredom, <laughs> if it kind of makes sense. Uh, in 2004, uh, a couple of Zambian students that lived uh, right here in South London, uh, we got together and, um, yes, yeah, through studying and stuff like that, that we discovered that we had one thing in common outside uh, our studies, which was obviously music. And uh, the whole setup was made up of like former Zambian, either radio or mobile DJs that had just migrated to the UK at the time. And um, we used to link up at one of uh, one of our friends' uh, houses that was in Canberra, and uh, his house was kind of kind of had that basement feel to it because um, it was just I mean it was just a typical student uh, setup, just a single room, double bed, but we we managed to make convert it into a studio. And, uh, yeah, through our time spent there is where we just decided to call the place. First, we called it The Basement. Then from there, I was obviously, like, our few um, specialities started coming out. We just teamed out and uh, obviously gave birth to a basement crew from just that simple setup. So, Oscar, how has the evolving nature of Zambian music influenced what you guys do? Um... On the foreground, in the United Kingdom, we all came in 2001. And uh, if you could follow the history of the current Zambian music, that's more or less like the time when Zambian music was more or less like getting together. And I'm not talking about, obviously, the Kalindula and stuff like that, but the new school. Uh, you're talking of the Black Moon Twos, the JK, the late Daddy Zimas, Ranel. That was kind of like the time when Zambian music was coming. And uh, it's just about the time that most of like the crew members just came here. So more or less like when we had the music then and to what we have now, I think the difference is quite wide. And now it's more or less like modern compared to the time when we didn't yet have a place. We're just trying out if Zambian music can be accepted. And... Uh, I mean, I could be proud and happy to say I was amongst the first Zambian DJs from 2001 to actually play the new school, more or less like, uh, yeah, we gave birth to uh, what's playing and what's current today. So what are your hopes for the future of Zambian artists? Maybe more nominations from Europe? Um, before we come to the nomination side, we are hoping for Zambian uh, artists to get recognition. And uh, through recognition is more or less like when we feel uh, their work can be rewarded. And um, our main goal basically is to promote Zambian music, except for instance at present in the UK, but to the rest of the diaspora. And that means like uh, right now our catchment area is Europe. So um, yeah, our main goal is at least to have Zambian music in at least every European country so that people can associate uh, the artist to uh, the sort of music style, they can associate the music style to the country, and uh, from there we kind of like grow everything else and like just like start celebrating our success. Here with your English Premier League updates are Liam Thorpe and the brightly dressed Michael Mumbo. <laughs> That's right, Charity. Well, as you can see, my colleague here, Mr. Mambo, is not wearing his usual smart suit, but in fact is rocking the dreaded Hawaiian shirt, which can only mean one thing, his beloved Arsenal side lost in the big game on Saturday against Manchester United. How's it feel, Mike? Oh, it feels great. I actually love the shirt, as you can see. Um, it's, it's, it's like I'm almost in Hawaii, you know, covering the US yeah. elections. It's quite tight on your muscles there as well. Yeah, good. yeah. So actually, it's not much of a punishment at all, really, is it? Well, I think the, the punishment was watching the team lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we were going to get to the Arsenal United game a little bit later on, but it was a good weekend for Man United fans all around because their two biggest rivals both dropped points. First game we're looking at is Chelsea away at Swansea, and they only managed a one-all draw there with a the late Pablo Hernandez goal ruling out Victor Moses' header. So a lackluster performance from Chelsea. What do you think? 
Not really. They they played well. Not every game is going to be a walk in the park. Besides, Swansea has been playing well for some time now. And I did say a team was going to get points off Chelsea. You did say that, actually, because yeah. I predicted the Chelsea win on this one, so Matt gets the points on that one. But they were dominating the game early on, but then they let Swansea back in. Is that a bad sign for Roberto Di Matteo's side? They, they have been playing generally well, and obviously they'll lose points here and there, but the most important thing is to stay as close to the top as possible. Well, they are still close at the top, but they have surrendered their lead in the Barclays Premier League. They now sit in second place. Now, the next game we're going to look at is the champions, Manchester City. Again, dropping points on the road here. They've only managed a nil-nil draw away at West Ham, and it could have been a lot worse after Kevin Nolan's strike for the Hammers was unfairly ruled out for offside. Now, Mancini looked very unhappy with his strikers, particularly, particularly Mario Balotelli. He had three strikers on the pitch, Tevez, Balotelli and Dzeko, and not one of them could manage a goal. How, why couldn't they score, Mike? <laughs> like I say, the City have been playing well, and obviously someone is bound to take points off them. West Ham was playing particularly well for a number of games. Uh, so, yeah, that's what happens. But we, we said on Friday that it's about time that City start pulling in performances, not just picking up points, but they're still not doing it. It's, how long can this go on for? You cannot uh, pull performances from thin air. You, you have to have a solid foundation. You, your key players have to start performing, and none of them have been doing that. So City haven't been playing as a team since the league started. Now, it's interesting you say that, because reports out in the press this week have suggested that Roberto Mancini was considering his future over the summer. He apparently had offers from seven or eight clubs. With the players hearing that, could that affect their performances? As a, as a professional, they, they played quite a lot of money and it shouldn't bother them who's the manager or not. If you're getting 300,000 a week or 200 and whatever, or thousands a week, you, you're not worried you, even if uh, uh, some coach from Africa comes to coach you. There's no problem there. OK, well, City currently staying in third position, not too off, off the top of the table. The next game we we're going to look at was Newcastle travelling to Anfield. Now, I called this one as a Newcastle victory. It actually turned out 1-0. Johan Kabay took the lead for Newcastle uh, just before half-time, but Luis Suarez scored late on to make it 1-0, and Fabrizio Colaccini was sent off for Newcastle, much to the anger of Newcastle manager Alan Pardew. Now, was this a fair result? It was a fair result, and I called it a draw as well. Oh, right. It's a clean sweep for Michael <laughs> yeah, today. You got the shirt, yeah, you got the right results. Yeah, the right, the, the right results, but the wrong one where it counted. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, did, it, I did see the challenge. It was a pretty nasty challenge. It wasn't only that, but the player kept on doing several of similar challenges as if he's intentionally wanted to hurt the other player. And what about Liverpool? How do you, how do you assess their performance so far this season? Well, it's, it's a team in, in, in transition. There's a new coach, new philosophy. We'll have to wait to see after December. OK, well, it ended 1-0, as Mr Mambo correctly predicted. We've got to get to the big game. We've got to get to the reason we're all here, and mainly the reason why he is wearing that shirt, and it's Manchester United versus Arsenal. Now, we build it as the big game, sort of clash of the titans, but in truth, it was more like men against boys. Manchester United dominated from start to finish, and to be honest, the 2-1 result does not accurately reflect the play that happened. Robin Van Persie, of course, who else, scored early on to take a 1-0 lead against his former side. And he didn't celebrate, which I thought was a nice touch. Uh, then United had constant chances, possession, until eventually an unlikely source, Patrice Evra, nodded a second. Jack Wilshire was then sent off before Santi Cazorla scored a late consolation strike for the Gunners. Manchester United now sit right on top of the table, just above Chelsea. So. You didn't think that they could really do it, but did you expect Arsenal to play quite this badly? Well, you never know with Arsenal which Arsenal you're going to get. Are you going to get a strong performance or not? And besides the rumours that the coach, uh, Wenger, and uh, his assistant are not getting on well, if that's the case, then it's not good for any team. But, I mean, there was a, a real feeling that Arsenal could afford the game, could get a result, or could at least play well against, the, against United. But United were very impressive, weren't they? Yeah, United, not, I can't say they were impressive because they played against a team that was just out there on the day just to show up. Yeah, so, but what about Robin Van Persie then? You really didn't want him to score, but it was almost inevitable, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it was inevitable that he will score. He's a pretty good striker, one of the best in Europe. So any, given any chance, he will punish you. OK. Well, that's it for today. Um, join us again on Friday. And I'm, I've got a feeling Mike might be wearing this shirt again. He's looking good. Yeah. OK, join us then. Well, today's photo of the day has been awarded to Albert Hugh Marombo. Keep sending us your great pictures to our ATV Facebook page and you could appear on the big screen. Thank you for watching ATV News and have a pleasant evening.